You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. Because it matters. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get over for business here, and let's wake up the football gods. My co-host, Joe Boo, well, he's back at the man, excuse me, at the Red Brick House. We'll be heading down there in a few. So we're getting this video off this morning, and outside it is dreary, it is rainy, it's it's warmer than it usually is in March, but it's just one of those blah days, which really hits how my mood is about the Cowboys. And the sad thing is, is we put ourselves through this over and over and over again, believing that the Dallas Cowboys are going to be different, but they aren't. Jerry Jones is doing his best word salad doing a whole lot of talking his mouth is moving it's moving but it ain't really saying anything you got cat boy there of course who thinks everything is great you know we've won enough games i've got fans that are mad at me and they're like why are you so negative because this is who we are this is the dallas cowboys that don't seem to care this is the Dallas Cowboys that wants you to spend all of your money and believe the dream without putting anything behind it. And as we sit here, understand, since we lost to the Green Bay Packers, we heard Jerry Jones say, we're all in. Um, and here it is, the only move we have made is making sure Trey Lance is coming back. That's all we've done. Other teams have got themselves in positions. They've righted the ship. And as we sit here this morning and look at where the salary cap is, we haven't talked to any one of our free agents that we have about wanting to come back. We haven't talked to any agents at all. It's like the Cowboys have gone on vacation. We haven't restructured any contracts to even get underneath the salary cap. As we look going down the list, we have the New England Patriots with 101 million. We have the Commanders that have 91 in the number one, uh, number uh, two pick. The Titans with 75. The Bears with 75. The Colts with 70. The Texans, which seem to be doing things pretty good, you know, turning their season around last year with 70. The Cardinals with 56. The Lions with 51. The Bengals with 48. The Raiders with 40. Two, the Eagles that were in the Super Bowl just two years ago with 41.9. The Rams that won a Super Bowl just a few years before with 40. The Giants even with 38 after signing Daniel Jones for 40 million last year. The Buccaneers that, you know, it looked like they were headed back to being the Buccaneers of old. Having won a Super Bowl, Tom Brady retires, making it to the playoffs with 37. The Falcons with 37. Looking like they want to get Kirk Cousins. The Vikings with 37. Panthers with 35. Jaguars with 29. The Jets with 20. The Packers with 13. The Ravens with 12. The Seahawks with 12. Steelers with 7.99. And talking about trying to get a quarterback. The Browns with 6.7. The Chiefs, Super Bowl winners, three of the last five, um, with three. The 49ers with 285000 And then there's the Cowboys with $10 million in dead money. $10 million in dead money. And we haven't even worked on getting under the cap. I don't know what they're doing. Other than talking to Jerry Jones, I mean Jimmy Johnson, and making sure Trey Lance is returning. That's it. That's it. And we're less than a week away from legal tampering. The team is going to look 
totally different than it did last year. Your starting running backs are gone, looking like they're gone. Your stalwart, um, much injured left tackle is definitely gone. Your center is gone. Majority of your defensive front is gone, and maybe Stefan Gilmore is gone. This is just, I, I don't even know how to feel other than numb. We have, Matt. the worst thing is, is Matt. we've been here before, and I hate to bring back clips, but this is, the Cowboys building for the future every year. It don't work, guys. This was two years ago. Think about how think about how negative it's all been. Yeah. And and I and I you know, God bless the Cowboys. I know you guys are the flagship. They let you guys say whatever you want to say. For like I my time, my three years there, there's only one time, Sean, that they said, Yeah, don't ask that question. Everything else, it's been fair game. Yeah. Not everybody does that. We start with the Washington uh, Commanders. Yes. The, their flagship station saying, oh, thank God we can talk about the Commanders now. <laughs> no, no longer affiliated with them. Right. So, But I looked at really, when I, Kevin, when I looked at just like a day-by-day timeline, you know, they beat the Eagles on January 8th. They lost two out of their three games, right? They blamed the officials for basically two of the three losses, which is terrible. Dak Prescott sits there and endorses fans throwing junk at officials after the San Francisco game. He has to come out and apologize. You've got a PR director who retires. Nobody, no big deal. Two weeks later, he has, there's this horrible story about him being accused of voyeurism, which he denied. Yeah, the Cowboys ago. have to throw a $2.5 million check at four cheerleaders. Dak Prescott has another surgery. The Cowboys trade a wide receiver that they used the number one pick on back in 2018 in exchange for a fifth because the coaching staff doesn't like him, right? Then they give all this money to a guy who tore his ACL on January 2nd. Michael Gallup's not going to be ready for camp, right? Tank Lawrence is their best pass rusher. He comes back, which is – that's a highlight. Jerry Jones gets named in a, you know, Springer-like lawsuit. <laughs> Randy Gregory – whom the Cowboys stuck by, despite the fact that he had done nothing for them for years, yep. gives them the middle finger, right, on a flip. Then they've got to cut Lyle Collins because the coaching staff didn't like him. But they kept their punter. <laughs> <laughs> Mac, Mac why, why is Stephen Jones the Alan Greenspan of the NFL? <laughs> That's a great one-liner, by the way. Thank you very much. Uh, because it's so, we see cute. all these teams talk about we're in cap hell, we're in cap hell, and then they go out and they trade for Tyreek Hill or they make these giant moves and add this big contract. I know the salary cap is a real thing, and you know I've talked to Stephen Jones, whom I like a lot, and he's he has come to ad- admit and embrace the idea: if you're going into free agency, that means you're overspending on that player because you made a big mistake two or three years ago. Okay, that's fine. That's that sound philosophy. Yeah. And are you getting any better? Are the Dallas Cowboys today? No. Today on March twenty third, part of March, March twenty fifth. Are they any better today, Sean? No. No than way. They were on. Okay. And no one, and no one, not even the biggest Homer fan. I mean, not even Mickey Spagnuolo would make that kick. M- Mickey might. <laughs> Mickey <laughs> might, but so. he tried. <laughs> yeah, he would try, but I don't think anyone would say that. They, they all. So there you have it. There you have it. The Cowboys, they've done nothing. We're, we're, we're in the exact same position that we are year after year after year, where the Cowboys believe that we're doing the right thing. You know, we, we, we trust the process. We get the word salad, and they do nothing. They're not even doing the basics right now. They will wait till the last minute to go ahead and get under the cap. You know, we'll hear something probably maybe by the end of the week that they've restructured a contract here and there to get us under, but won't have the money to do anything in free agency. You know, we get, we, we hear stuff about, well, we, they're going to trade for, you know, they, they want to get Hargrave. Well, okay, there's that. We do a whole lot of talking. And I would rather, instead of hearing the talk, 
I would rather see some action. Less talk, more action. Show me what all in is. Show me that you are making changes. Show me that there's not problems in culture starting from the top on down. And then I'll be happy. But as a Cowboy fan, I don't know how any of us can be happy at what we see right now. It's like you don't even know, do we want Michael Gallup or not? We paid him $13 million a year. Do we want to risk that we're going to have to give up that $13 million a year and take another dead hit? Other teams realize we made mistakes. We need to move on. We just saw the Denver Broncos are going to take in $85 million in dead money. Record. Record dead money. But they recognize this ain't working. We got to do something different. And that's not to say that everything that you try is going to work. But what I can say is the same thing over and over and over and over and over again has not worked. Building for the future and worrying about the salary cap down the road. Somehow, you've been doing it with that philosophy, but you're in one of the worst cap situations from anybody. So, what is building for the future? The future is looking bleak. If I'm the Eagles, I say, you know what? We were in the Super Bowl. We were in the playoffs again for a third year in a row. We got some money. We got some young players. We got some new coaches. We've got some hope that we can do some other things. And we got a front office that'll do that. If you're the Cowboys, where's that hope? I don't know. I wish I had it this morning. Um, This is literally giving me a headache. And I just want... I just want to see them do something. And people are going to say, yeah, listen to him. He's just crying. He's just crying. But everything hinges on what are the Cowboys going to do with Dak Prescott, brand new father? Are they going to go ahead and just say we're – because what it really feels like, what it really feels like is we're just imploding the team. We're not going to pay – you know, we're we're basically – to me, in my mind, what this really feels like, and maybe I'm wrong, and maybe they'll you know, get Dak Prescott's done in a couple of days and all these things, and then all of a sudden we got some money and it turns around, and maybe they're just playing with our emotion, which is possible with the Cowboys. But right now, it feels like the Cowboys are literally gutting the roster, clearing cap space, and getting ready to start over after the season. That's what it honestly feels like. If you're not going, I mean, you got rid of Tyron Smith, you know, who has been there forever. You couldn't work out that deal. If you don't sign Dak Prescott, then you're guaranteeing that you don't have money to bring in other free agents. And if you don't restructure, or if you only restructure the absolute positive minimum to bring in some more bottom tier free agents, then you are literally saying, we're waiting for the next guy. And whom that might be, I don't know. I don't know. But you don't have any insurances for your head coach. Actually, for any of your coaches. Everybody's on a one-year deal. Your quarterback looks like he's playing on a one-year deal and you're going to take a $36 million dead hit next year. I can't see where they're going anywhere else. Let's see if there's any optimism that Dak Prescott's contract, you know, it's one of those things that when you're rich, you don't care about ramifications. You care about being right more than anything else. And the fact that you have somebody else that, you know, perceived to have power over you, you'd rather burn the whole thing up than to admit that somebody else does. And that may be what we're actually looking at. Let's listen in. To get down, somehow it's possible they extend his contract, but it doesn't sound like that is imminent. 
Cowboys can save about $18 million in cap space with a simple salary to signing bonus conversion that does not require Dak's approval. I would think that's the minimum that happens this offseason, and they'll continue to talk about a potential extension, but I don't think it's going to be easy. Look, if you it wasn't in, the last time, but if way. you're interested in, in the top of the NFC or in anything really in football right now, this is a front burner story. Dak Prescott's contract situation is going to impact a lot of things. Jerry Jones at the Combine, confident he will get this thing done. But listen. He had uh, one of the best years, as you all know. But the thing that I would point out is that uh, we think that a lot to do with the fact that Mike McCarthy is uh, right there involved in the uh, Dax play more directly and more involved in the offense and think that there's a lot more to come. So we'll see. We're going to be working on his uh, contract as we get into the future. What we do there or don't do, I couldn't say at this time, but uh, the main thing is that uh, he's going to be our quarterback. What, what, what? Well, a couple things. Hawk joins us, by what the up, way. We Hawk? had some technical. Uh, Andrew Hawkins, good to see you, Hawk. We'll get right to you. What, what, what should we take from that? Well, number one, he's patting himself in the back because he's like, well, the coach did a good job with the quarterback, too. No, duh. We understand that the coach impacts the quarterback's play. Dak's had really good seasons before. Certainly last year was his best, but he's had seasons that were very similar in regards to that. The Cowboys, guys, correct me if I'm wrong, have two options. One, they could have moved on from Dak Prescott in totality. That probably would have happened at the end of the season. Or two, figure out his contract to extend him. Mm -hmm. They're not going to sit here. You just said they can convert 18 of that $59 million to a... Convert more than 18. They can convert so does that it. drop his cap number to 40? No, it would drop it. Well, it would drop it by 18. So what does, it, what does that mean? 41 or something 30, like that? 37 ish. Yeah. Yeah, or yeah, 41. So, so yeah. that's about the highest cap number in the league this year was Patrick Mahomes at 37 million. The Chiefs uh, managed to overcome that. They, they mm -hmm. did, and he's Patrick Mahomes. And, you know, again, the number right now is $59.5 million. Wow, and there's $59 million and a half that dollars. Could be, we could be seeing the last season for Dak yeah. Prescott in Dallas, yeah? The thing people have to understand is that Dak Prescott cleaned the Cowboys' clock in the last negotiation. Mm -hmm. He has nothing but leverage. They are not allowed to franchise him. Right. They have the monster. Even if they did the conversion to drop the cap number down, next year's cap number is astronomical. 56. Uh, over $50 million if he's not even on the team. So... He's in great. They do. He does not have to make one single move unless they do the deal he wants. I mean, hear from Hawk here this morning again. We had some technical issues, so it's the first time we're able to have him jump in. Always good to see you. What What is your take on Jerry and Dak and the Cowboys and all of it? It's all screwed up. Uh, Jerry has no leverage. I think this is a negotiation play, but the problem is that we've talked about before is that he's playing owner and general manager. Dak Prescott has all the cards. He understands that. He knows that. And actually, I don't think Jerry Jones is doing himself any favors by insinuating that the reason for that success is solely because of the head coach and it does play into the larger issue with the Dallas Cowboys and when they get in these scenarios it's why Jerry Jones has not won of recent years what do you think of this Mike T yeah a couple of things first of all it cracks me up we're gonna give credit to the coach who a couple of weeks ago we were gonna extend right so <laughs> that juxtaposition to me is fascinating <laughs> but fundamentally Dak Prescott's in the prime of his career green he's gonna be 31 he has a lot of great years and if we're wearing the Cowboys guys what I'm saying to each one of you, if not Dak, then who? Get the deal done, pay the bill. It's too. Can't live like that. I, really? Because the alternative is a lot worse. I could give you about two thirds of the NFL that would give their left leg to have Dak Prescott as their at, quarterback. At 60 million? Not at 60. Well, okay. The, yeah, wait well, a second. They're not going to get him. <laughs> like, yeah, here's my thing. If Dak Prescott doesn't play for the Cowboys next year, he'd be the first quarterback in the history of that organization to play for someone else. Tony Romo didn't, Troy Aikman didn't, Danny White didn't, Don Meredith didn't, Roger Staubach. And Dan Orlowski, you're an idiot. We can take numbers and skew them any, any way we want. We often can take numbers and we'll fit them into the narrative that we want to try and paint. And I probably am guilty of this. Can take numbers and... Here's where you're an idiot, Dan Orlowski. You are wrong, Dan Orlowski. Because the Cowboys had a Super Bowl playing quarterback a Super Bowl playing quarterback who played for another team. Craig Morton. Craig Morton was the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys when they played against the Colts. Yes. Yes. They lost that game. Craig Morton was the favorite of Tom Landry, even though he had Roger Staubach. To the point where 
they literally weren't sure which guy, or Tom Landry, which guy he wanted. He literally, in one game, had them switch series. Roger would do a series, and then, boom, Craig Morton would come in. They were like two ships passing in the night. And Craig Morton left the Cowboys and played for the Denver Broncos, whom they played against each other in the Super Bowl. So, Dan Orlowski, you're lousy. You're wrong. But go on. I didn't. So, they, so are the Cowboys really going to let him walk? They are they really going to roll that dice? Right, right. And, again, to me, what's going to force that decision, guys, like who are you going to go with? Trey Lance, are you going to bring in Zach Wilson, try to resurrect him? Like, they're not going to be in the top five. Okay, the Next Cowboys year. don't have a culture problem, right? We, that, you, you don't win 12 games in, in a row, three years in a row, and have a culture problem, correct? Correct. You, that's well, fair? Correct. That's, I mean, they there's have a, a lot of different ways you can problem. slice that apart. Yeah. They have a championship. So I, I disagree with that because some of the things they're saying on social media about Dak Prescott doesn't happen in other places. There's also a wide delta between Dak Prescott and let's go get Zach Wilson. I mean, there's there's some space Ooh, in between but, those two things. The way they look at it, the way the Cowboys look at it, Tony Romo was undrafted. Dak Prescott was a fourth round pick. Right. They, 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 they could find these guys. I, I, I mean, like that's not, and that's their last whatever decade and but a half. They're gonna just remain good. But their championships were all won with Roger Staubach, who won the Heisman, and Troy Aikman, who was the would, first pick in the would, draft. They would point out that having Dak Prescott hasn't helped them clear that bar either. All right, everyone stay where you are. We will be We have mostly... There you have it. That's how the Cowboys view it. We can just find anybody to take over for Dak. So, there you have it, good people. I am going to be hitting the road. And uh, as always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And be safe out there.